please rise for a flag salute and a moment of silence for members of our military and for the victims of COVID-19. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Notice requirements for the open public meeting law have been satisfied concerning this meeting. The annual notice schedule was published in the Home Mr. Tribune and the Star Ledger on December 18, 2020. A copy of the schedule was posted on the municipal bulletin board. It should be so noted in the minutes of this meeting. Councilman Spiller. Here. Councilman Fakara. Here. Councilwoman Mia. Councilwoman Drum. Councilman Patel. Here. Councilman Anderson. Here. Councilwoman De Jesus. Council Vice President Bauer. Here. And President Small. Here. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from May 18, 2021? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Beginning with second reading ordinances this evening, we will take letter A first, which is an ordinance authorizing directing a title and possession of certain property uh, be acquired by donation. This is a donation from Friends of Greenable Woodbridge donating 13 bicycles uh, 13 electronic locks, 25 bike docking racks, and 20 safety light kits. Can I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and the public hearing be open? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter A, letter A only. You know, comment from the public. Can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed? The ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Letter B. Uh, can I get a motion to continue the hearing to June 22nd? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Letters C and D are first reading ordinances. Can I get a motion that both ordinances be passed on first reading, published in the Home Minister Tribune on June 4th, 2021, with notice of public hearing to be held on June 22nd, 2021 at 6 p.m. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Resolutions 1 through 40 are listed. If you can just uh, go through, especially the renewals of the uh, consumption distribution licenses in the same social clubs. Let me know what you'll be abstaining from. Mr. Mitch. Uh, regarding resolution number 37, please show me abstaining on the Columbia Club of Avenel and the Avenel VFW. Any other comments? Uh, Mr. Mitch. Just two, two quick comments. I ask for the, my fellow councilmates their support and consideration on resolution number three. That's for the Avenel Firebridge and annual open house and resolution number four, Avenel's very merry holiday lighting in conjunction with the Avenel Community Day Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on resolutions? Uh, Mr. Mitch, I'll be abstaining on uh, Don Bosco Knights of Columbus and Woodbridge Elks. Any other comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. At this time, we'll go to the uh, public session of the meeting. You have five minutes, uh, one time minutes. Hello, Mr. President. Ken Gardner, 101 Scoter Avenue, Woodbridge. Uh, first, I just want to uh, thank, uh, I got to attend some of the uh, Memorial Day services yesterday. Uh, the Coast Guard Art Auxiliary uh, down at the waterfront and uh, the Woodbridge American Legion and VFW um, put, uh, put services together. They were really uh, very nice. And um, if anybody is interested, they can please mark, uh, although yesterday was Memorial Day where we remember those that lost their lives uh, in November. Uh, I know it's a long time away, but maybe if people mark their calendars now, they can come out and uh, support our veterans. It's very easy to remember. It is uh, the 11th day of the 11th month at 11 a.m. at the post. Uh, guys do a great job, and, and the ladies there as well. Uh, Mr. President, I want to read a letter. Um, as all of you know, 60% uh, of our property taxes 
go to, towards the, uh, the Board of Education, and uh, God bless the Board of Education members who volunteer their time. Not, uh, not an easy job. I don't want to get into their business, but uh, this is a letter that I had written back February 11th uh, of uh, 2011. Uh, to Governor Christie, uh, it referenced critical time for Woodbridge uh, School District, uh, in parentheses, $43 million underfunded. Uh, dear Governor, as you know from our past discussions and those I've had with several of your senior staff, the Woodbridge School District is at a critical crossroads. If the Supreme Court is forcing the implementation of the new formula, that should include Woodbridge. Um, as many of you know, uh, in years past, the Abbott districts got the majority of the money, the rich districts were able to pay themselves, and towns like Woodbridge got caught in the middle with low aid and not the ability uh, to pay. Back to the letter. I realize that every child across New Jersey deserves a quality education. However, with limited tax dollars, Woodbridge should be a priority. Our schools have not failed, yet a cut in aid will be devastating to our students and the future of our township. The resulting increase in class size and elimination of programs has a terrible potential to set us back. Please think seriously about our demographics. One quarter of, this is back then, one quarter of Woodbridge Township School District's students are economically disadvantaged. A large aid cut will result in these students not getting the attention they need. That will create an unbearable strain on the rest of our district. I fear the outcome of that situation. It has been brought to my attention that our district currently spends, again, this is back then, 9% below the state aid adequacy as state aid adequacy as defined in the most recent state formula. Districts with considerably fewer economically disadvantaged students receive much more per pupil state aid. I again ask that you please take a look at the funding of the Woodbridge Township School District properly. Please see that our $43 million short, we are $43 million short of the state's funding formula using 2010 numbers. I have seen great things that can happen in our district. Our teachers and administrators will not let you down. Proper funding will make Woodbridge a model for the rest of the state to follow. Outside of jobs, this is the number one state issue facing Woodbridge School District. At every t opportunity, I will ask uh, for your support. Uh, that was copied to the governor's then chief of staff, Rich Bagger, um, his deputy chief of staff for policy, Wayne Halsenbeck, and the uh, Bergen County assignment judge who was looking into it, Peter uh, Doyle. Um, I uh, emailed copies to the mayor, uh, Senator Vitale, Senator Wisniewski at the time, Assemblyman Coughlin, uh, Superintendent Crow, and Dennis DiMarino uh, was the uh, was the board secretary. Um, I want to thank uh, I want to thank Assemblyman Coughlin. Um, in recent years, he was, uh, I believe, one of the sponsors of the uh, the new funding formula last year. Um, back in 2017, uh, 16, 17, we were getting 23.9 million dollars in state aid, and in the coming year, we're going to get 63 million dollars in state aid. So, Assemblyman. Uh, you did a great, uh, a great job for us. I, I greatly appreciate it. I know uh, I, I bent your ear, and uh, Steve Sweeney, had, the Senate President, had been a, a longtime advocate of this. Uh, really did a great, uh, a great deed uh, for Woodbridge. Puts us back into the ball game, and uh, and helps our, our district. So uh, again, a, a big increase. Um, you know, people ask what you'll do when you run for office. This is something that I looked at back in 2011. Uh, as I think the mayor said recently, I text a lot of politicians and nag them. Well, I nag them on behalf of the taxpayers of Woodbridge. When I used to say, see Chris Christie at events, he would say, yes, Ken, I know your wife is a teacher and Woodbridge is underfunded. So obviously you got the message. Thank you Thank for you. the time, Mr. President. Are there any other comments the from comments. the public? Good evening. Paul Lund out of Hope Lawn. Um, someone asked me the last time I ran for office if I was so uh, frustrated with politics and politicians, why would I run? And it's a valid question. And it's a two part answer. First, I have a friend named John who asked me to run mo every couple of years. And secondly, even though we're accustomed to getting one out of every three votes, no matter how, how hard we work for it or not. Uh, we want to send a message that not everyone necessarily agrees with everything 
that's being done in our town. Now, if I hadn't met John 15 years ago, I'd probably just notice everything going up around me and, and just kind of wring my hands and accept that I have not much control over what happens in Woodbridge Township. And I'm wondering if anyone on the council is aware of how many registered voters there are in Woodbridge. I've seen a couple different statistics. Is anyone aware offhand? Total registered voters in the town? Registered voters, Woodbridge Township. 62,000? Yeah, I saw 60,700. So the last time Mayor McCormick got his fifth term, it was with 10,544 votes to the 3,000 some odd votes that Sue Boros got. That means about 46,000 people stood home. And I can't account for why they don't get active. Maybe they're too busy with their lives. Maybe they don't really understand the process or the opportunities to, to be heard. Or maybe they're resigned, like I would have been if John never asked me to run. <coughs> So I think the best I could do is just send the message that if we just had 3,800 votes swing once for someone from a different party, from a different perspective, then we might have true diversity on this council. Because I don't count diversity by how many colors. I don't count diversity by how, by how many genders. I count diversity by diversity of thinking. And not everyone has to agree all the time. But it seems to me this council has agreed an awful lot with John McCormick. So I'm taking a stand that there are alternatives. And I'm realistic about that. I'm going to enjoy the process this time. I'm going to keep my, my respectfulness of everyone present. But I'm going to speak my mind directly and without feeling a sense of having to attack or, or a sense that you guys are here to attack me. Last thing, as a Christian, I want you to know I'm also called to pray for those who are in authority over me so that it may go well in my city. I'm also taking a stand on praying for leadership, among them the council, Mayor McCormick, that he have wisdom, maybe some mindfulness for what might be collateral damage in his vision of a transit village. I have speeders, um, and I, I, my wife wouldn't forgive me if I didn't bring up, there's a lot of speeders running through Hope Lawn like they're in a drag race, and a lot of noise sometimes. And I know there's only so much our fine police officers can do, but I just want to be on record of saying if they can set up more speed traps, particularly around Lee Avenue, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any other comments to see, please? Mary Nasser from Port Reading. This Monday marks one year since Woodbridge's first Black Lives Matter protest. A lot of you would know that because you were there. Where are you now? You have not shown up to any other protests we have had. You have not done any of the things we have asked you to do. You have not even met with us. You have not listened to us. Why not? Uh, Ms. Nasser, uh, you're incorrect in regards to trying to meet because there was a group uh, uh, well, it was led by Daniel, and I had uh, communications with him on several occasions, and we just couldn't get together because uh, they wanted a, uh, a Zoom meeting, and we said we wanted to meet in person. So I told Daniel, when his group is back, let me know, and we'd be more than happy to sit down and talk. All right, can you give me a clear reason why you didn't meet with us through Zoom? We have immunocompromised people in our group that cannot meet in person due to COVID. We weren't meeting on Zoom. Period. I'm sorry? Period. We weren't meeting on Zoom. We're why? Because I said we weren't. That's why. That's a really great answer coming from a council president. That is. Okay. My second question. Where do you stand on the issue of Palestine? Will Woodbridge be making an official statement in regards to it? We are not getting involved in, in, in Palestine and Israel. We are not. Yeah, of course. We haven't, we haven't why would you get involved to children being killed, people being killed, innocent people being killed? Thank you. You're welcome. Are there Council any President, from the public? Mr. I would just like to respond. Um, I have shown up to um, other protests. Um, I've stood in protest by myself before, and there were no other members of other parts of the township there with me. Um, and um, 
I've communicated actively with the members of the WILD group, and I continue to do that. So I'm only responding because when you cast the entire um, group, um, there are some of us that are communicating with you, and we'll, conti and we'll continue to do so, and we'll continue to do so. Mr. Yes. Vitarek. Uh, good evening, everybody. John Vitarek Woodbridge. Uh, you know, for years, and probably the most one that mostly attended is council meetings, and personally, uh, most of the time, listen to it. But what I realized that it's less and less people come to council meetings, less and less department heads are all here. There's no mayor, there's no deputy dire the director of the police department. Most of the department heads are not over here. Mr. Vitarek, the director of police is here. Mr. What? The police director is here. Police rep representative. The police director is present. You should be hiding over there, I'm sorry. But anyway, you know, and the most of the, you know, council people and the mayor usually comes every meeting, but it's, it's not, it's not, why? Then I told maybe COVA was a problem. Then I told people who come over here attending because of Black Lives Matter. There's certain things that I told was kind of a, not right to ask you people because you just not before. We, you have no power, we have no power what happened at national level, international levels, so you people cannot make a decision, it's not your job. But it's a lot of big, big decisions made, and I don't think people, don't see people over here that vote on it, that are attending those meetings. I mean, is there any kind of a, uh, how many meetings can you miss not to attend? I know mayor doesn't have to be here, but I think the rest of the department here is the council people, they should be here. But again, a lot of things been said over the years, over development, and I'm sorry to say, I've been to most of them, from Evernell, you name it, I was there for 20, 30 years. And I say it's not a good idea for Woodbridge. And what I meant, not just for Woodbridge proper, I meant for the Woodbridge Township. And what you see in, the, in the other cities, they didn't do them any good. It just destroyed them. Overbuilding, it's not the answer to growing. Growing means more people, which doesn't mean it's plus. It costs you more money to do it than you take it in. We're making money, but it costs us more to do it. Now, people in Woodbridge proper always say that people in Colonia, they don't care what happened. Woodbridge, Woodbridge don't care what happened. Colonia, vice versa, Evernell, whatever it is. Now, all of a sudden, with more pressure going around, the people in Woodbridge proper finally woke up and he says, what are we going to do? I said, it's too late. You did it to yourself. What do you mean? How are we going to drive? How much is it going to take us to go here, point A to point B? I said, did you see that years ago? But you didn't care what's happening to other towns, which, which would be township I'm talking about. You just didn't, you ignored it. And I think, still think, now they woke up. And now they're concerned what's going to happen to us. I don't know what's going to happen to us. I don't know how can you rebuild the main street. You're not going to do it by putting more apartments. Over the years, Mayor McCormick and most of the mayors that do anything study how we're going to do the Main Street, how are we going to bring business, how are we going to be people to Main Street. Whatever you people try did not work. And that the worst you could do right now is building more apartments. I talked to certain merchants on Main Street, do you people do any business because they're the trend? You know, most of them tell me, no. Because those people, when they're going to New York now, they do as much, they will go to New York before they open. And they will come from New York get to the cars and go when they're closed. So they don't do any, 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 any benefit to Woodbridge Township growing grow the downstream mainstream or anything. Put in the apartments, you know what it is. It's not just you get, you have no control once you put people. You can't choose people who's coming. The landlord decides who's coming and who's going out. So you can't just choose because of high-end apartments. As long as you pay the, pay the rent, there could be anybody and God knows what. That's why you got a certain problems already, because we don't know who's coming in. We cannot find who's coming in. So what was done? Now, unfortunately, I feel sorry for the town that's going to happen. Again, we cannot follow other towns, because we said before, that we are behind other towns in building the apartments. That's not the answer. Why do we have to follow something that's negative? It's not positive for the township. Certain areas, certain cities, certain townships, certain counties, they don't do this what we do it. 
to do it from Newark, always down. It's fine as Osbury Park. It's not the right idea. We got caught in it. I know developers got a right to do it because that's what they bought it. Another thing was before, Mayor always said, brownfields. Otherwise, we get nothing. We put people in their brownfields. Now, they didn't use, you don't use brownfields no more. Mr. Retire, you your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments this evening from the public? Uh, good afternoon, Daniel Jimenez, Avenel. Uh, I'm not here to propose any policy changes today because uh, I'm with WOW and our group has already attempted to work with the council uh, in order to try to correct the racial inequity and injustice that plagues this township. So today I'm here to propose something a little different. I'm here to propose a question to the council. Um, council President Small, you already briefly spoke on this, so I guess I'm going to be asking like the rest of the council what they think about this. Um, because I believe that the people that serve our township can only be trusted by those people if the people can count on them to speak on injustice and human rights violations no matter where they may be. Uh, so with that being said, I want to ask you all, will you acknowledge the Palestinian genocide that is being carried out by the State of Israel? Will you disavow and condemn the violation of human rights that is being carried out by one of the biggest allies the United States has? What is your opinion regarding the eviction, murder, and ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people? And do you condemn Zionism, the belief that you can be entitled to land and kick those who have lived in it for generations out? I hope that the people that serve this town can find it in themselves to condemn this, but should you say nothing, that already tells us everything we need to know. We just want a condemnation on murder, eviction, and genocide. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments this evening from the public? Sir. Good evening, members of the council. Charles Cradaville. I'm from New Brunswick. I'm the Central Jersey organizer with Food and Water Watch. I do have a fact sheet I wanted to share with the council. I think I have enough for everyone. May I approach the clerk and give it to him? Sure. I did want to follow up on my remarks at the last couple of meetings. I've been pressing for some answers, and I did get some answers. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. But I'm a little confused by one of the answers. So I see on uh, Mr. Bauer's agenda is the Woodbridge Waterfront Park, uh, which we discussed is the one near the proposed power plant and the existing power plant. And I've been trying to figure out which elements of it are under construction since I was told at the first meeting that uh, the park is under construction. And I heard back that, quote, the primary features are already constructed. And I don't, for the life of me, know what that means. Can anybody tell me what parts of the waterfront park have actually been constructed so far? Mr. Simaluka? Well, partial land are you referring to, Seymour? Caseby. Caseby, the Wa Woodbridge Waterfront Park has been advertised for many years. We're, we're not. We're not building anything, so whatever the developer is building out there or stated they are building or in place. Marta, do you know? Well, the, this, ha this topic has come up now uh, at several of the past meetings, and um, I believe that instruction was provided to you at the redevelopment agency meeting to get in touch uh, with regard to the answer to those questions that you have, and I, I would just recommend that that is the process you would want to follow. Okay, so I did that, I got an answer. The answer was that, quote, the primary features of the park have been constructed already. What does that mean? What are the primary features of the park? following up on the response. Sorry, but I kind of encourage you to go back to whoever told you that and ask that question because that's the person who gave you that answer. Us saying anything here is totally immaterial to the email that you received, which is your question. So 
I'm just following up because it does not make sense to say that something's under construction and there's nothing there. It's just, I mean, anybody can go out at Riverside Drive, you can see the power plant got built. The waterfront park didn't get built. And they were paired up as kind of like a, a, a promise that this would happen. Um, and there's lots of, uh, uh, there's lots of fanfare over the idea of a park, but there's no park. And so I'm just following up to find out what, if anything, actually has been done. And it seems like nothing. Um, I also know there was a plan for a green tech park, uh, also in Woodbridge. And now I'm told, quote, other uses are being explored. Can anybody tell me uh, what uh, other uses? Is it true there's plans for warehouses on Penval Road? Ms. Starden? Mr. Hattery. I'll okay. take this one, Charlie. Uh, the green uh, incubator concept was proposed in 2007. Uh, we worked very hard on trying to make that concept work. It did not work. So we then reverted the, the property back into a redevelopment area, and now we are looking for appropriate usage at that site. It's, it's very, very uh, common when you propose certain projects that they don't come to fruition. This one did not. We're moving on to something new. So you can let this one go. Okay. Well, thank you for getting back to me. The uh, uh, Parker Press Park, uh, uh, I was told no public land was, was given away or sold, but isn't it true there were air rights that were given for the street that was there? Can you tell me the nature of that agreement? Did the, did the developer pay for those air rights? Mr. Simaluka. Ms. Darden. In order to answer that question appropriately, you're going to have to do an open request. Really? What should I ask for? What you just asked for. Well, as you know, open is for requesting records. What records should I request? If I may, I would suggest you, rec you ask for any agreements between the township and the developer. Okay. And what's the name of the developer? This occur. We'll get that after okay. for you, okay? Was that the sound of my time elapsed? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll follow up with you after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? Shaw, Avon now. Uh, first, I hope everyone's been well. Uh, it's been a while since I've been here. I uh, hope everyone's been staying safe. Uh, I just wanted to uplift a few things. Uh, first, uplift the advocacy episode, efforts that he's trying to do, especially with the fossil fuel power plant. Um, and call specifically, I think I saw on YouTube, one of the township administrators said uh, there wouldn't be a plant built, but that clearly was a lie. Um, and I wanted to circle back to that a little bit, um, because for an administration that come election time advertises itself on being the best, and listening to residents, it seems that there's a constant failure to commit to true telling and transparency. I think that's something that we very much need to work on. Um, and about a year ago today, as Mary said, I attended my first council meeting ever after the protests, um, where the mayor said that we need to answer a call to action. Yet in this past year, what policies, initiatives, or programs has Woodbridge implemented to make vulnerable re residents safer? I'm struggling to recall any, because there aren't. If anything, in the past five months, we learned of two separate incidents in which the police have once again violated the rights of black men. I know the approach is to say you can't comment on anything because they're legal proceedings or things of that nature, but at what point will we comment on the recurring trend of excessive policing in this town? First, Najir Park story, which made national news. Are we not embarrassed as a town that we confuse two separate black men, use unethic unethical interrogation tactics, and violate the civil rights of someone? Are we not embarrassed that a black man in a separate incident can't even go into a quick check without being confused for someone else and is violently beaten by officers? Is this who we are as a town? We can't commit, we commit civil rights violations, acts of racism, brutally beat other humans and then hide behind we have no comment? That's disgraceful. And as I said, a year later, what has changed? I could be the person who was falsely identified at quick check like Jeremiah Daniels Porter was. Or I could be the person held in jail for 10 days like Njir Parks was for a crime that he wasn't even the same zip code in. 
There needs to be more initiative from the, both the mayor and the council. And as uncomfortable as it may be, it is absolutely necessary that we ensure the safety of all residents. And I'm afraid, to be more specific, that this is an issue that can be solved with just diversifying our police force. While that certainly is a red flag, even with more diversity, many problems would still remain, just with a diverse face committing the acts. The problem is policing itself, and all the evidence from other towns, uh, cities, municipalities show that this is the case, diverse police force or not. I think one of the biggest problems that we have in our town comes with decision making in that we don't actually make decisions with any empirical evidence behind it or any anecdotal evidence behind it. We are one of the few towns in the state, and I looked this up, that doesn't have much data, data available on police encounters, traffic stops, the sort of calls that they respond to, or the racial discrepancies readily accessible for people in the public to analyze and interpret. Much of that info, like in the case of Niger Parks, is often leaked to the press or shared by the press. But we should be proactive and increase transparency as much as possible and release data and information from maybe the past decade or so. And that way we can make decisions that improve public safety instead of just relying on what one person says or, or the other. And lastly, I saw an article um, in which the mayor said this is his town and he owns everything. And I'm wondering if there's any accountability from the rest of the council, his team, or himself from that. Um, I've, oh, again, been out of the loop, so maybe I missed something. But saying this to another resident is scary. And politics aside, no elected official should ever feel comfortable enough um, to ever feel that powerful and comfortable enough to say that to someone. And I'm wondering if maybe Speaker Coughlin, seeing as you're a pretty po powerful person in New Jersey, have, have anything to say about that. Is that what New Jersey politics is about? I'm curious. Or do any other members of the council um, have anything to say about that? Is that the type of leadership that we co-sign? I'm curious about that as well. I know you want to answer my question, so we can wait till after. And I will say, although I think a lot of the thoughts about uh, building apartments isn't a fair critique because we should look to actually grow Woodbridge and make it a sustainable place to live, I do certainly respect the healthy competition that the other man um, alluded to earlier in his speech. As it doesn't take a genius to know, our local government has become way too comfortable in their seats, and this has led to only certain interests from certain types of residents being addressed. I really hope, regardless of who, who wins that race, this competition spurs a new focus toward changing the way things are run in Woodbridge, such as less gatekeeping of power, more decision making that is backed by evidence, less lying to the public, more transparency, and most of all, a Woodbridge that we all can be proud to live in. And you guys can feel free to answer my question earlier. If not, um, that's all I really have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Council Any President, Mr. Mr. Councilman Anderson. Does any, I, I don't know if anybody else is gonna speak. I, Director Hubner, uh, would you care to comment on some of the training that the police department's going through since uh, last year in regards? Well, training here. Should be any new policy take effect January 1st of next year. All the officers in the state of New Jersey have to be trained. Um, we've gone through mental health training, uh, mandatory. Uh, we've developed long-term uh, relationships with Raritan Bay and Rutgers Mental Health to deal with uh, mental health crisis. Uh, our officers are going through crisis uh, intervention courses. Uh, there's a whole host of different training, mandatory training, that every officer in the state of New Jersey will have to go through. Thank you. The AG's been extremely progressive. Uh, yes, the proactive. Yeah. Is there anything specifically that we're just doing? Sir, the sir, the you can't. That's a great question. You so can, we've we've all, you're welcome to ask them after the meeting. Council President, we, we, also, we also partner with SCOMAS, which is a special case management out of New Brunswick that handles uh, incidents with uh, subacute uh, incidents with mental health, which has greatly helped our police department and follow up through those people and get them help that they need. Thank you. Council President? Yes, Council President. Okay. Uh, Michelle. I was just going to try to get some of your oh, questions yeah, yeah. answered. Um, I know, uh, Director Hubner, if uh, Woodbridge PBA or uh, Woodbridge Police Department is now taking initiative with body cams, is oh, that? Yes, that's correct. So uh, could you involved. speak to that, please? Yes, uh, we've already hired someone who is going to run the program for us. Uh, we haven't ordered the uh, equipment yet. We're on the process of that. We've uh, gone through. Uh, different demonstrations from different companies. We've selected a company and we are in the process of ordering. So there'll be a little bit of backlog because many, well, all 
police departments in the state are going to be required to have that. Thank you. Um, uh, Michelle, I, I, I was going to have some of my some of what you've spoken about in my personal agenda. First of all, I just want to congratulate you on graduating from Harvard University. For anyone, uh, you know, uh, that that is a major accomplishment for our entire community. Um, uh, secondly, um, I hear wholeheartedly uh, some of the points that you've made, um, uh, and I know that I've um, reached out to our police department. I've come to human rights meetings, as you have come to. Um, the police department did make themselves available, um, and I'm continue, trying to continue that conversation. I know our neighboring town, um, Metuchen, Don, Jonathan, uh, Mayor Jonathan Bush, did have uh, one of the Baptist churches, uh, Keith Owens, uh, Reverend Keith Owens, um, conducted a um, oversight um, of their police department in, in Metuchen. And that would be something that would be worth exploring in Woodbridge as well, where the community themselves can at least, like, uh, you know, have a, a company that they can partner with where they can conduct their own oversight. We, as you know, the mayor uh, and the council invested in the, um, in the uh, uh, report from Genova Burns. Um, some of the information that came back was not as favorable as uh, we would have hoped, so we're taking steps towards, um, you know, correcting those, those types of things that we saw in the report that were um, discussed that night. And it, a lot of it was the overall opinion, especially from the subgroup of African American men, of how their opinion, uh, how they felt about the police department. And we have to change that. Um, and that's something that, as a councilman and, and with my, my council members, that uh, we're going to try to, you know, make sure that we, we stay on track with the community and talking with the community. The main thing is having dialogue. And if we can continue having dialogue with people like yourself and, and members of the community, along with the police department, I think we can get there. There are some things as far as diversification that you pointed out that you say it doesn't change things. Um, I do find that um, racism finds a home when there is no diversity. And I know that New York State Police uh, was just recently reported that they have 4,700 police uh, policemen uh, in the policemen and women, but only 4%, and their police officers reported that they did feel that there was racism in their police department. That's something that I think that um, it, it, it goes across all police departments, and we have to make an effort to, to diversify. Um, so those, those are just my comments based on what you're talking about. I'm, I'm, I want to try, and I know that many of our council members as well would like to try and answer certain questions. Some of them we can and we can't you know, uh, based on your public comments. Some will just take as comments. Um, but if you're going to ask questions, I'm, uh, believe me, if you stick around, I'll try and answer. All right. No problem. Are there any other comments? Yeah. Uh, Victoria Birch, Colonia. Um, I had a question about police training. Can I just direct that? Through me, and I'll, I'll direct it, Victoria. Do you remember the acronym for the training? Um, there is a five day type training and then one that's like two to three hours. Director, you familiar you with that? Mm, I think it has more to do crisis prevention. CIT. CIT, great. Um, are you aware of how many of the police officers, I know there was a great percentage that had undergone the shortened CIT training. Do you know what percentage that is? Director. I don't know exactly how many officers have gone through at this point, but we continue to send officers, and several have been through. Several have been? Yes. Have been, yes. Okay. Um, do you have any goals for making um, that a larger percentage, and or how, like, what steps are being taken to make sure that all of your officers will eventually receive the days-long training? Director, that's well, our goal that everybody will go through. It would always be our goal to have 100%. Um, hopefully that becomes realistic, but there's mandatory mental health training that every officer has to go through. It may not be the exact one, your uh, specific training you're talking about, but there's other forms of the same type of training that every officer has to go through. Okay. Um, what timeline? do you have for meeting your goals? Well, there's really no timeline that we can set. It's when the training is available. It's not continuous. Uh, whenever the course is available, we try to 
uh, get officers in into the uh, program. What uh, format is that training? Like, um, it's a classroom. A class that they have to physically attend. Well, during uh, COVID, I believe it was uh, Zoom training, but okay. I believe it's going back to classroom training. Okay, and that happens quarterly, monthly, yearly, what? I, I believe it's twice a year. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments this evening from the public? <laughs> Rashida Woodbridge. Um, I just wanted to say that I was happy to hear, this is my second time coming, <laughs> but I was happy to hear that Woodbridge police are going through the CIT training. I've actually gone through the CIT training myself, and I know that there are some issues in regards to scheduling and trying to train um, throughout the county and um, I think it's it was an for me it was an amazing training they have social workers in there and I think the focus mainly is on trying to figure out how to manage individuals who are in a psychiatric crisis as opposed to um, I think the young guy was talking about more profiling and things in regards to issues going on with black males in the community so the other thing with CIT is sustainability so once you get your police officers through, I mean, I'm sure it's a small percentage just because it's not offered as often and they, I think they do um, like maybe, t t like you said, like twice a year in certain counties and it's small. It's like a small room like this. Maybe they might have like 10 to 20 people, half are mental health professionals and the other half are policemen. But the issue is sustainability. So they take the course, it's about a week course, but then after that, application becomes an issue on the things that they've learned. So I think sustainability is something that's going to be important once they go through the course, is how they continue to um, educate and keep that knowledge that they've learned in that course. Thank you. Uh, Council President, oh, Director. That, if I could, um, as I said before, there are other types of training that they continue to go through yearly. Uh, every year they have to complete that training. It could be computer-based, uh, but unfortunately, uh, we deal with mental health issues several times a day. So unfortunately, they keep in practice. Uh, I was just gonna say thank you very much for those comments. Uh, when I worked in the pharmaceutical field, I spent a, a, a two-month-long preceptorship in Columbia Presbyterian working with Alzheimer's patients, but nothing gave me more experience than living next door to Eleanor, who had Alzheimer's. I daily dealt with either she didn't recognize me one day, and the next day she did, or she was paranoid, and those types of things. And so if our police officers are getting that field training where they are dealing with the um, with mental uh, health patients, and, uh, and you know, it could be a criminal activity, but I think that the field training more than anything uh, gives them that, that experience. So uh, thank you very much for your comments. Councilman Power. Thank you, Council President. Uh, Mrs. Osborne from the Human Rights Commission and Don Green from the WONAC group and I sat in on a uh, webinar with Prosecutor uh, Ciccone, who had very nice things to say about you, Director Hubner, by the way. Something about breaking you in? I don't know. <laughs> um, but in regards to the training that you were bringing up, um, she explained to us that it was going to be a three-day training at Rutgers University, very intense, and that it was going to be related to the regulations that were going to be implemented starting January 1st, 2022, uh, and that it would be a turnkey situation, that the police departments would have representatives at Rutgers, and they would come back and turnkey the information to the people in the department. That's the way it was reported at this webinar that I was in. So I don't propose to be a police uh, expert. I'm just repeating what, what was told to me. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments this evening from the public? There are no other comments. Can I get a motion that the public comment portion be closed? Motion. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Agendas. Uh, number five on my agenda, bike lanes, bike share, bike paths. Uh, Department of Public Works right now is in the process of putting in three bike pads, one at Captain Carlson Park in uh, Seawarn, one at Tansman Park in Woodbridge, and one at the Greenway in Fords. And what this is going to be able to do, there will be bikes located at these locations. You could download an app, and with a credit card, you could go rent the bike 
and you can take that bike around town and when you're done you could just dock it at one of the three stations so i i've seen this i i know metuchen had it i don't know if they still do i've seen it out in south bend indiana it's a it's a great program um, so pretty excited that uh, we're going to have this in place probably by the end of the month and again it's going to be uh three three stations to begin with and download the app go get a bike and you tool around town and then just bring the bike back and you're all good um number 16 is our summer concerts start june 21st that's oldies monday uh tribute tuesday starts june 22nd excuse me whippers wednesday uh is june 23rd local band thursday starts on the 24th of june and country sundays uh 27th of june all locations are at Woodbridge High School. Uh, it's a great time. Uh, Sundays are 7 o'clock. All the other concerts, Monday through Thursday, or 7.30 starts. And there's always a 50-50 uh, a at these concerts to benefit uh, many of our local organizations uh, from town. Um, a couple of announcements. On Friday, June 4th at 5.30, out here in the park lot out front will be a Pride, Pride Month flag raising. So again, June 4th, 5.30 p.m., uh, this Friday, Pride Month flag raising for anybody who'd like to attend. On June 12th, there's food truck and music bash at Woodbridge Center, uh, 11 a.m. start. Those interested, a couple of thank yous. I want to thank the Parks Department for getting out there and hanging up all the hometown hero banners. It was a lot of work, but uh, well-deserved and well-earned for all the, uh, uh, the families that uh, had a banner raised for their loved ones. Special thanks to all our VFWs, our American Legions, our firehouses, our Coast Guard auxiliaries that held Memorial Day services on uh, Monday. They're all very special, and I appreciate all the hard work that goes in by uh, all these groups. And uh, just uh, God bless all our first responders, our essential workers, and God bless America. Vice President Bauer. Thank you, Council President. My agenda is in order. This is number uh, one uh, reminder announcement. Forest Business Community's first cruise night will be uh, for 2021 will be Monday, June 7th, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. located at 372 New Brunswick Avenue in Forge, which is a Sipperstein Paints. Bring the whole family out. Performances by the European School of Dance, uh, the DJ Richie uh, in the house, uh, food trucks, 50-50s and more. So if you want, it looks like it's going to be good weather. Monday, come out and support the Forest Business Community in Forge. That's all I have tonight. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Councilman Spiller. Thank you, Council President Squall. I have a number two, the Grand Park. Now that the weather is finally nice, I want to remind the residents of the adult outdoor exercise equipment that is located in the Grand Park. Um, not only do we have the equipment there, we also have it at Pelsman Park and Cypress Park in Port Reading. All three feature state-of-the-art cardio and strength equipment. All three parks are also equipped with walking and jogging tracks, so hopefully uh, a resident can take advantage of that. Item number three, Oros Park this Saturday, June 5th. There'll be a bird walk. Watch held at Oros Park at 8 a.m. No registration is needed. Just walk up and take a tour and see the many species of birds that call Oros Park home. Uh, item number nine, I want to thank all the residents in the Avenue Fire Department who attended memorial services at the Avenue VFW yesterday, as well as all our uh, VFWs and emergency services that held memorial services. It's important we never forget the ultimate sacrifices uh, that these men and women made in order for us to have the freedoms that we do. That's all for my agenda this evening, Council President. Um, thank you to all our emergency responders, fire, EMS, our Woodbridge Police Department, sir, all our public works employees. God bless America. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Council President. Um, for the Hall of Fame, I do want to acknowledge the passing of Dr. Vincent Caprero, Hall of Fame member, uh, founding member uh, in 1988, served as president from 1997 to 2000. Uh, he was also a former head coach, I believe, at Uppsala University. Right. Is that correct? And Edison High School. And at Edison High School, we and he was a superintendent. Yeah. Superintendent for Edison. And, and the head coach. And the head coach, yeah. yes, for Edison Township Schools. Um, the Juneteenth event that I announced at the last meeting, um, I've been posting on social media and encouraging others to post it. Um, the location has changed. It is no longer going to be at the Woodbridge Community Center. It is going to be in the concert area behind Woodbridge High School from 12 to 4. Um, it's, um, there will be no other event that day. It will, that will be the only one. 
Um, there will be close to 20 vendors. Um, there will be performances by local artists, um, Colonial High School dancers. Um, there will be a local dance school, poetry. Uh, DJ Flash will be there. And um, uh, uh, this is also um, going to be um, at 25 Samuel Lupo Place, um, again, behind the high school. Again, I know that there's um, some uh, questions regarding Juneteenth. This is the first year New Jersey has acknowledged it now, and uh, it's been signed into law as a, as a state holiday. And um, although it falls on a Saturday this, this year, we'll, we'll be able to acknowledge it uh, once it falls on uh, a Monday or, uh, through Friday as a, uh, an acknowledged holiday. Um, it, it has Texas roots. But it's a, it's a na it should be recognized as a national holiday. Again, this was June 19th, 1865, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation had been signed when many of the Confederate uh, states were not observing um, the freedom of uh, uh, black slaves um, when Union General Gordon Granger rode into Galveston, Texas and um, informed them that they were, they were free. Um, and it should be nationally recognized, and um, I'm glad that uh, Governor Murphy, along with our Speaker of the Assembly, um, brought that into law here in, um, uh, as a uh, national, uh, as a state recognized holiday. So I hope that everyone will come out. I will be sending invitations out to all of our elected officials um, to ask them to come out and celebrate. It is a celebration. It is not a protest. There's some notion out there that this is some type of protest. This is a celebration, just like we do the Indian Day Parade, just like we do the Christmas Day Parade, just like we do the, the St. Patrick's Day Parade. It is a celebration. So please understand, this is no protest. There was some notion, and it came back to me that there was some type of protest. This has nothing to do with the protest. Um, so that said, I do want to acknowledge um, today in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, President uh, Biden is the first president in 100 years to visit the site of the Tulsa Race Massacre, which occurred over 18 hours from May 31st to June 1st in 1921, so 100 years from today. And this was an attack on what was known as Black Wall Street. Um, it was a section of, of Tulsa, Texas, Greenwood section. Tulsa was a town a lot like Woodbridge, 100,000 residents. 10% of them were, 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 um, were uh, African American, as in Woodbridge. We're 10% black here in Woodbridge. So 10,000 residents lived in Greenwood, uh, the Greenwood section. Um, something, a skirmish happened. Well, not a skirmish. This was a, a mistaken or a wrongfully accused young man was accused of sexually assaulting uh, an elevator operator. And uh, he was a young African-American. Um, they were going to lynch him. Um, some some of the uh, African-American business owners. This was, uh, the Black Wall Street was noted by the New York Times as one of the most prominent areas of um, uh, black economic, um, uh, where it was just economic thriving. And uh, that area, so what happened was um, a young man was in there on an elevator, apparently stepped on a woman's foot, she screamed, um, they arrested him. Um, after much ado, the next day he was released. Um, but there was a, a newspaper article that went out that he, was, he had sexually assaulted the woman. Um, over 300 African Americans were killed and put into a mass grave over a period of 18 hours. This was not acknowledged for some 80 years. Today, there's two residents. One is 107 years old, and her brother is 106 years old. They were children when this happened. And blacks were being slaughtered, and basically, they stole their land. They stole their land and used it, you know, to, to just take, used it as an excuse to take their land. Today, President Biden's there. He's the first president that visited that site. Um, Schools were not taught about it. 
Um, the country didn't know about it. It was on the History Channel last night. I watched it all night long, and it's still on the History Channel, so I encourage you to watch it. Now, I don't say this to, this is a dark part of our history. This, this is a dark part of our history, but the first part of history and to, to have um, healing is acknowledgement. So by President Biden going there today, it's a public acknowledgement of what transpired down there. They actually, the mayor of Tulsa, they began investigating this a few years ago. They began digging and find, finding the bodies, finding that there was a mass grave because there, this was supposedly a myth. Um, the publicity of it had been suppressed uh, and it's not the case. And all you have to do is look up the information. I'm not gonna read all of the information here, but this is a, a historic day. It's 100 years today that this happened. And President Biden is in Tulsa, Oklahoma for that. So when we look at the economic gap between whites and blacks, the economic wealth gap is 177,000 to 17,000. So when people, the one thing I'm, I'm bringing it up is because when we drive around town and we see bumper stickers that say, never forget 9-11, this is something that we have, to, we have to understand. Don't forget these types of things. Tell these stories. It's a part of our history, but this is how we can come together. We have to come together through acknowledgement. So when we talk about a holiday like Juneteenth, it's not just for blacks. This is for everyone in our community to come and celebrate, to come and acknowledge that we had a very dark history, but we're willing to move forward. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Anderson. And uh, congratulations on your inductee into the uh, Pop Warner Hall of Fame. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well deserved. Councilman Ficarra. Thank you, Council President. I just want to start out off my agenda. There's, there's been a lot of discussion about some of the projects that are going on in town, in particular the apartment complex. I'd like to talk about four of them. The Hess property uh, on Upper Main Street, which used to be a solar panel farm. The property over where Riffey's used to be, across the street from Walgreens. The strip mall across the street that you can see out this window and the Stern Towers, uh, which were actually tax-free because they were federal buildings. Those four properties, before the projects began, generated about $500,000 a year in tax revenue that came back to the town. Once the projects are completed, they will generate $3 million a year. Now, I recognize that money is not everything, but you, you need to consider, when we have discussions with community members outside of this room, uh, tax rates are always a big question. So smart growth is the issue. Um, the downtown projects alone, excluding the Hess, uh, funded the new Ross Street School and the almost newly renovated uh, Woodbridge Middle School. So these projects, because of these projects in this area, Ward 1, which is referred to, Ward 1 is Woodbridge, Property tax values have property values have gone up considerably. So you have a situation where you have property values going up, and the town is gaining tax revenue. So I, I just wanted to put that explanation in there because there's a lot of misrepresentation about um, like we're not taxing people or we're giving stuff away. Uh, let me get down to some of the uh, the nitty gritty stuff here. Our our COVID vaccines continue to to move along. Uh, almost 9,000 vaccines, combination of first and second dose. Uh, the clinics continue to go on, even though we've had 52 of them so far, there's still more room to go. Effective June 4th, indoor gathering and capacity limits will be lifted. Dance floor um, restrictions will go away and workplace rules will be lifted. Uh, at this point, I think you, if you are not vaccinated, it's because you're choosing not to. Uh, there are so many opportunities to get out there and get vaccinated, so that's on, on us. Moving over to um, recreation over at the Woodbridge Community Center. Uh, we have summer camps, three opportunities. We have the Woodbridge Community Center, we have the club at Woodbridge, and we have Merrill Park. DeAsia is the person to speak to on that, 732-596-4180. And as you can imagine, those spots go by quickly. Um, the pavilion, 
on the top of the hill behind the community center is available for all type of special events. I mentioned that. I was there last night. It's a lovely place. The Skyline Mini Golf is, uh, is uh, open and the batting cages. Uh, the spring hours are 3.30 to 10 on Fridays, 12 noon to 10 on Saturdays, and Sunday 12 to 9. Uh, it's just a wonderful place to go and recreate. Uh, so if you have an opportunity, please stop by. And then I'm very excited to announce that on July the 2nd at Alvin P. Williams Park, we will be reinstituting our fireworks. Uh, they are definitely coming out. The park will open at 4 p.m. It will be closed during the day. It will open at 4 p.m. Again, this is on July the 2nd with a rain date of July the 5th. The musical guest is a group called the Nerds. They're very popular. They play a wide range of music. They will perform from 7.30 till about 9.15, and we anticipate the fireworks will start at dark, which is about 9.20. That's all I have, Council President. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Patel? Uh, thank you, Council President. My agenda is in order. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mitch? Thank you, Mr. President. My agenda is basically in order. Just a couple uh, highlights. Next week is the primary election on Tuesday for the viewing audience and people in the audience today. A reminder, polls are open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. If you have a mail-in ballot that was received at your home, uh, please return that through the United States Post Office or drop it in the drop box in Town Hall at the library uh, before 8 p.m. next Tuesday evening. For the most part, voters uh, pre-COVID, you're going back to your voting locations uh, prior to COVID and the consolidation that, uh, due to last year's uh, pandemic. Uh, otherwise, if you have any questions, call my office or the County Board of Elections will direct you accordingly. That's all I have. Thanks. Uh, Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, executive session immediately following the administration's agenda. Well, Council Thank President, you. can I just make one acknowledgement? Yes. Um, I just got word because I knew that um, one of our pitchers from Kennedy High School was going into the state playoffs today with 199 strikeouts, Olivia Sims. She got her 200, 200 strikeout on the first batter, and they won their first round of the state playoffs. So I just want to congratulate Olivia and also congratulate uh, JFK uh, softball team. Great. Thank you. Council President. Councilman Harris, I believe uh, she also was homecoming queen, correct? Yes, she was. Absolutely. Congratulations. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, she got the trifecta going on. She gets one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> trifecta. Business Administrator Simaluka. Thank you, Council President. Uh, under Administration of Finance, I have a tax and sewer overpayment. I have a grant application for the Sea Warren Dog Park. I have a proposal for a design for the ADA lift and staircase for the Acacia Youth Center from USA Architects. Thank you. Director Hubbard? A uh, quick comment. I think it was Mr. Lund uh, asked about speeding and uh, loud vehicles. Uh, just so you know that over the last four weekends, Friday and Saturday nights, we've had details out uh, targeting speeders and loud mufflers, and we've issued 1,132 summonses just for that. So we are addressing that. Just this weekend, Director? Uh, over the last four weekends, four Friday weekends, and Saturday sorry. nights. 1,100. Yes. Very good. Thank uh, you. And all I have this evening, Council President, is a traffic ordinance from New Brunswick Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, excuse. Thank you, Council. I'm, I'm going to take uh, Mr. Bruce, okay. if you don't mind. Sure. So, uh, under Public Works and Engineering, I have a final change order for the 2020 Sanitary Sewer Route Control. I have a release for a surety bond for the Highway 1 Avenel. I have a release for a sidewalk permit for 62 Preston. Uh, Road in Colonia, I have a release for a sidewalk permit for uh, 242 Main Street, Woodbridge. I have a purchase of a 219 uh, Ravo 5 Series Street Sweeper, and I have an add-on for TM Associates up Smith's Creek proposal. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Ms. Darden, do you have anything? Not this evening, thank you. Thank you. Legal? Nothing this evening, Council President. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Right. Oh, we got to go. Motion for executive session. Yeah, Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of Public Law of 1975, permits the exclusion of the public in certain circumstances. Now, therefore, be resolved that the public court of this meeting is hereby recessed uh, for approximately 15, uh, 15 minutes to discuss union contracts. I get a motion to approve the resolution. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. This time I'd like to ask the public to please exit the room. Thank you. All right, Council President, we are back in session. After following the executive session, we have a resolution that will be before you, number 42. Uh, two.
and this will be the approval of the memorandum of understandings uh, with three of our uh, union contract. Uh, first is with uh, 469 local, which are the custodians. The second is for the supervisors, same local for custodians. And the third is for the AFSCME uh, dispatchers, 3044-1. Uh, Can I get a motion to approve memorandums of agreement for all three contracts? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have. So, yeah. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All right.